Getting to the ball is the most important part of every stroke, but after that, the next most important part is going to be your ability to control the angle of your racket face at the moment of contact, because that's what dictates where the ball goes. You can get everything else kind of technically wrong in theory, and if you can control the angle of the racket face at contact, you can still hit fantastic shots, as is evidenced by the different varieties of technique that we see from some of the best players on the planet. There's different grips, there's different ways to prepare, there's different swing paths, but they all have fantastic racket head control. And it works the other way as well. You see a lot of players, they look like they hit a nice stroke, but they just cannot control the racket face. And the result is very inconsistent, low level tennis. So ultimately, your ability to play better tennis is gonna be dependent on racket head control, which is dependent on your level of coordination. So that's what we're gonna be working on in this video. I'm gonna be showing you a very simple assessment that we can do to kind of look at your coordination. And then I'm gonna be showing you some training drills that you can use to very quickly improve your coordination. I hope you enjoy the video. If you do, it'd be great if you could give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel before, really appreciate it if you could do that as well. Obviously, tennis shots are full body complex skills, so ultimately we need the whole of the body to be well coordinated. But here we're assessing and working on a very specific skill that relates to controlling of the racket face. So the assessment is called rapid alternating pronation and supination. So pronation is this movement where you turn the palm down. Supination is this movement where you turn the palm up. In terms of tennis, your ability to do this accurately and at speed is massively important because pronation is what allows you to get racket head speed and topspin on the forehand. It's what controls the angle of the racket face at the moment of contact on your forehand. It's also what allows you to create racket head speed and control the angle of the racket face on your serve. If you're a two-hander, your left hand is doing pronation at contact, so it's gonna be really important on the left side for the two-hander. If you're a one-hander, then we're thinking about supination. So it's now supination of the right hand, and obviously two hands, the right hand is supinating. So like I said, your ability to coordinate this movement accurately and at speed is one of the most important skills that you can have on a tennis court. Now, neurologically, what we're assessing are the parts of the brain that create and coordinate movement. So movement is created by the frontal lobe. So if I'm controlling my right hand, we create the movement of the front part of the, the left side of the brain. It's called the motor cortex and kind of the premotor cortex. There's a few areas involved, but it comes from the left side of the brain. We've then got a part of the brain on the right called the cerebellum, that's gonna coordinate this movement. Obviously, if I was doing stuff with my left hand, it would be the other way around. So this assessment is assessing function in these areas and mainly in the cerebellum, the part at the back that deals with coordination. This isn't something that I'm making up. This is something that neurologists and doctors and physiotherapists use to assess the function in this part of the brain. If you're interested, I will link a paper in the description so you can read a little bit more about it. They're gonna be talking about diseases. Obviously, I'm not saying that people have diseases. We're just using this assessment because it tells us what's going on within these brain areas. So that is the assessment, rapid alternating pronation and supination. It looks a little bit like this, but I'm now gonna break it down in more detail and give you very specific coaching points about how to do it. So I'm gonna talk about analyzing the assessment in a moment, but here it's gonna focus on the coaching points. We want to try and really standardize the way that we do the assessment so that when we retest, we can get more reliable information. So for the test itself, I'm gonna be holding both elbows into my side. I'm gonna start by testing my right hand, which means I'm gonna have my left hand flat out in front, and then I'm gonna be hitting the front and back of my right hand, making a slapping sound on the palm of my hand. So this is the target that I'm aiming for. I'm hitting the palm of my hand. I'm not gonna to touch my fingers. I'm not gonna to touch my wrist. I'm just gonna be hitting the palm of my hand and it's gonna be the front and back of the hand like this that are making contact. So this is what we're going for. Front and back of the hand making contact. And you're basically gonna do that as fast as you can. Now, when people do this, they often try and, you know, compensate or maybe not try and compensate, they compensate as a way to try and do it better. 
So you've got to monitor against that when you do it yourself. One of the big things that people do is the elbow starts to move because they can't control the pronation and supination. They start to use other parts of the body to assist. That's why we're making sure the elbows are touching the side. The next thing that happens is players bend their hand like this. They kind of cup the fingers and they start flip-flopping backwards and forwards to try and speed things up. So we're trying to keep the hand as flat as possible. The next thing that happens is that people start to do this to try and assist with the other hand. You know, if I try and do this quickly, you can see that my other hand does move, but that's because I'm hitting it and, it and it has to move. I'm not assisting, so you're gonna try and keep it as still as you can. And then, like I said, you're hitting the palm of the hand. So we don't want it hitting the fingers. We don't want it, want it hitting the wrist. We're just going for the palm of the hand. And the assessment, you'll do five seconds on the right side as quickly as you can. Switch over, do five seconds on the left side as quickly as you can. Have a rest for a few seconds if you need to, and then repeat that three times. So five seconds on the right, five seconds on the left, five seconds on the right, five seconds on the left. So that is the way that we're gonna do the assessment and you might wanna watch that bit a couple of times to really understand these coaching points because then it's gonna allow you to kind of get better information from it. Okay, for analyzing the assessments, we're gonna be looking for a few different things. We're gonna be looking at the accuracy of the movement because obviously accuracy is really important. Now to analyze your accuracy, we're trying to hit that same spot on the palm of the hand trying to keep the elbow still. So if you start hitting the fingers or the, the wrist or doing funny things like that, or instead of flipping your hand over, you start to hit the side of your hand or do double taps instead of flipping it over, or if your elbow moves away, all those things are a lack of accuracy. Then we're gonna be thinking about the rhythm and the speed. Now, the faster you can do it, the better. The more rhythmically you can do it, the better. So we don't want two that are really fast and then it starts to go slow and then it starts to go really fast. So we need the accuracy and the rhythm. And you might find that you're accurate at slow speeds, but then you start to go faster, then you start to become less accurate. And obviously that's the sort of stuff that we're looking for because that's what happens when people play tennis. As soon as they try to hit with power, they start spraying errors because their coordination isn't working at a high enough level. So they're kind of the two key things that we're looking for. We're also gonna look for endurance as you go through. So are you amazing at the start and then the third time you do it, you're just kind of, things are going completely awry. We're looking for that. And then the final thing that we're doing is comparing side to side. You should be pretty much equally as good on your right side and your left side as this, even if you're a right-handed player. So if there's a big deficit on the left side, that's gonna be an important finding. The reason being, the part of the brain that deals with coordination on the left side is also really important for rotating to the left on your strokes. So it's gonna be really important for everything you do. So it's all about balance. And for that reason, if you've got a big deficit on one side, whether it's the right side or the left side, that's the, the side that you're gonna use for the retesting that we'll do in the moment. If there are no deficits, um, and they're, or sorry, if they're even side to side, then you just choose either hand, but I would probably go for the hand that holds the racket. So that's how we analyze the assessments, kind of look at your assessments now, figure out which hand you're gonna use for your testing and retesting, and then we're gonna do a few different drills to see if we can very quickly improve your coordination. So now what we're gonna do is some testing and retesting to see if we can improve your coordination. So you're gonna do the assessment, on whatever hand we've just chosen. We're then gonna do a drill, which is basically something that's gonna activate a certain part of the brain. And then we're gonna retest to see whether the coordination improved. And there's three possible outcomes. The first one is nothing changes. And that just means we didn't activate your brain in a way that it cared about. The second one is it improves. And obviously if we find a drill that makes your coordination improves, we can use that to make you more coordinated and when, within your practice sessions to help with the quality of your practice. The third thing that can happen is your coordination can get worse. And if we do one of these drills, you know, and some of them are gonna be a bit strange, some of them are gonna be eye movements. And if we do an eye movement and it makes your coordination worse, that's also a really important finding as well because that's gonna be massively holding you back on court. So that's the, the structure that we're gonna be using. We're now gonna do a few different exercises. So I'm gonna be testing my right hand. What I want you to do is test now. If you're using your right hand, you're then gonna rub the whole of that hand. So I'm just, and arm. So I'm just gonna rub the hand and arm 
And the reason that we're doing this is because sensory information is really important for our ability to create accurate movements. So I want you to just rub it for maybe 10, 20, 30 seconds tops, and then retest it. Did that change it? Did it stay the same? Did it get better? Did it get worse? So that is the first test that we're gonna do. The second thing that we're gonna do is we're going to try and create some circles with our fingers. So I'm gonna choose an awkward finger just to challenge your brain in a certain way, but I want you to try and make circles with your little finger. So I want you to go for about four or five, five circles in each direction, trying to keep your hand still the rest of the hand still. The other fingers might move a little bit, but you're trying to keep the hand still and just make smooth circles. Do that, rest a few moments, and then retest. How did it respond? That's a direct drill to kind of activate the same part of the brain that coordinates it. Sometimes that can be really effective, other times not so much. So they're the first two drills. The next drill that we're gonna do is gonna be slightly different. We're going to be activating kind of a visual skill and the visual pathway. And the reason that we're gonna do this is because in order for information to get to these areas, we have to go through different parts of the brain. So what I want you to do is test out an eye circle. I'm gonna look at my thumbnail. I'm gonna be making a circle with my eyes. So I'm making a circle with my thumb and I'm just tracking it with my eyes. So I'm not sure how clearly you can see my eyes because the sun's out, but I'm trying to keep my head as still as possible just tracking my thumb, like so. Do about three, four, maybe five circles tops in each direction, and then retest. Did it change? Was it faster? Was it the same? Was it more accurate? Was it less accurate? How did it compare to the one before? So that's drill three. Drill four, we're gonna to go to a slightly different part of the brain. We're now gonna look at our thumb, and we're gonna turn our head from left to right. So you're going to do that about five to ten times. We're now targeting the balance system that lives in the inner ear. Really important system for everything, but keeping your eyes locked on the ball is going to be a big one. Do that and then retest. See what goes on. Then we're going to do a very similar looking drill. This time we're going to go up and down with the head. So still looking at the thumb. My eyes are locked on my thumb now. Again, if I'm looking at the camera lens now, I'm not sure whether you can see my eyes because of the sun, but my eyes are staying still, my head is moving. Retest, see whether anything changed. We're then gonna do one final drill, which is gonna look really strange, but often it can be very, very effective for this. And I want you to draw circles with your tongue. So you're basically gonna draw circles around the front of your mouth, do five one way, five the other way, and then retest. And see how it responds. Did it stay the same? Did it get better? Or did it get worse? Okay, how did you get on? Did you find any of those drills improve your coordination? Normally when I work with people, I find one, two, often three drills make a difference. Uh, sometimes all five of them make a difference. I've done this with hundreds of players and I don't think I've ever seen uh, anyone that that particular sequence didn't improve coordination in some way. So if you didn't notice any changes, I highly recommend recording it or getting someone to watch you because when players don't have good body awareness, often there are very noticeable change happening, changes happening, but they just weren't aware of it themselves, but you can easily see from the outside looking in. But providing you did find a drill or a couple of drills that worked, the way that you can use these is you can start to do it a few times a day, maybe three, five times a day. Wake up in the morning, test your coordination, do whatever drill it was, retest your coordination, and then carry on with your life. But by doing that, you have upregulated your coordination system. And then a couple of hours later, you do the same thing. And if you do this on a regular basis, you can start to make meaningful changes in your coordination that translate to better control over your shots. Now, what we can do kind of at a deeper level is a bunch of different assessments to find out ways to switch things on faster and to improve your coordination more. Because here we were going through a random sequence kind of based on the parts of the brain and the, the neurology behind the scenes, but in 
real time, what we normally do is run a sequence of assessments, kind of find out which areas we need to target, and then often by targeting those, we get faster and better changes. And if that's something you'd like to learn more about, this is kind of what I do with tennis players. I teach players brain-based training like this to improve their skill level so that they can play better tennis, because ultimately, it's your skill that defines what sort of quality of tennis you can play. It's obviously important to get good technical help and to understand the tactics and to structure your practice properly. But if your body can't do something, it can't do it can't do it but the good news is with this brain based style training you can make real changes and really change your level of tennis if that's something you would like to learn more about i've created a masterclass i'll place a link up there and i'll place a link down in the description so you can check it out if you sign up for that masterclass, it's going to give you more detail about brain-based training, and it's going to tell you a little bit about my program at the end of the class. If that's something you're interested in pursuing further, it'll also tell you about the next steps that are involved. Okay, hope you liked the video. Any questions, comments about this stuff, uh, leave it down below.